Welcome to Ultrasound GI Tract, Part 2. There are 55 questions and answers, including flashcards and multiple choice. Ready? Let's go! What are the cellular layers that make up the appendix? They are serosa or adventia, muscularis propria, submucosal, and mucosal layers. An abundant amount of what tissue is found in the mucosal layer? The mucosa layer is abundant in rutiform tissue. What technique should be used to help determine whether the mass is within the colon, separate from the colon, or the colon itself? The water enema technique should be used. What are the organ in the picture and what signs? The pictures depict the target or bull's eye sign in the colon. A small, tumor-like growth that projects from a mucous membrane surface is what? That is a polyp, which is a benign tumor. What is the most common benign tumor of the stomach? The most common benign tumor of the stomach is the leiomyoma. So in this picture, this is a transverse image of the upper uh, left quadrant and it dem demonstrates a complex tumor in the region of the stomach that was diagnosed as a leiomyoma. What is the most common malignant tumor in the stomach? Gastric carcinoma is the most common malignant tumor in the stomach. It is about 90 to 95 percent uh, of the malignant tumors of the stomach. Is gastric carcinoma the fourth leading cause of death? No, it is sixth leading cause of death and it usually occurs more often in older men. Where is the stomach that the gastric carcinoma mostly occurs? 50% of the gastric carcinoma occurs in the pylorus, 25% occur in the body, and 25% in the fundus. Describe the gastric carcinoma lesions. Gastric carcinoma lesions may be ulcerated, diffuse, polypoid, and superficial, as in the picture. This is how the gastric carcinoma lesions look like in ultrasound. What is another primary malignant tumor in the stomach that about 3% of the stomach tumor? Lymphoma. What is the second most common malignant gastric carcinoma? The second most common malignant gastric tumor is leiomyosarcoma, which is 1 to 5% of the tumors. What does this image depict? These are the metastatic uh, tumors, and they um, may come from the melanoma or from the lungs or breast cancer, and these tumors are found in the submucosal layer, forming the circumscribed nodules or plaques. The result of luminal obstruction and inflammation, leading to ischemia of the vermiform appendix is what? That is called acute appendicitis. What are the symptoms of acute appendicitis? Patients with acute appendicitis usually present with pain or rebound tenderness over McBurney's point, and we call that kind of pain is McBurney's sign. Some of them, or maybe all, also present with nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, and fever, and also very high count of white blood cells, and we call that leukocytosis. What is the narrowest portion of the colon? Sigmoid colon, which is in the left iliac fossa, in contact with the psoas muscle. Which age has a higher rate of perforation, preschool, children, or adults? Preschoolers have the highest rate, which is about 70%, compared to 30% in children and 21% in adults. 
How does acute appendicitis look like an ultrasound? In ultrasound, acute appendicitis has greater than 6 mm in diameter, um, is non-compressible, and lacks a peristalsis. What are mucolosceles? They are appendicles and mucoli. What are appendicoliths? They are the fecoliths or calculi in the appendix. What is a mucosil? Mucosil is the gross enlargement of the appendix from accumulation of mucoid substance within the lumen. Pouch-like herniation through the muscular wall of a tubular organ is called what? Diverticulum. What is the diverticulum that is located on the antimesenteric border of the ileum, approximately 2 feet from the ileocecal valve, and present in 2% of the population? That is called mecodiverticulum. What condition in acute mecodiverticulitis may not be distinguished clinically? Acute appendicitis and acute mecodiverticulitis are usually misdiagnosed. What is the condition that is regional enteritis, a recurrent granulomatous inflammatory disease that affects the terminal ileum, colon, or both at any level? That is called Crohn's disease. What are the clinical symptoms of Crohn's disease? The symptoms are diarrhea, fever, right lower quadrant pain. What are these? All these pictures depict Crohn's disease. Which of the following statements correctly characterizes the esophagus? A. It originates just inferior to the C6 vertebral body. B. The esophagus connects the pharynx with the stomach. C. It enters the abdominal cavity by passing through the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm. D. All of the above. E. A and B only. Answer is E. A and B only. Which of the following statements correctly characterizes the relationship between the trachea and esophagus? A. The trachea and esophagus have a uniform, fixed relationship with no variation across individuals. B. The trachea typically lies directly behind the esophagus. C. Cricoid pressure will typically displace the esophagus towards the anatomic right of the trachea. D. None of the above. The answer is D. None of the above. Which of the following is found throughout the entire length of the small intestine? A. Plicae circularis. B. Villi. C. Microvilli. D. All of the above. The answer is D. All of the above. Which of the following statements correctly characterizes haustra? A. Haustra are found in both small and large intestines. B. Haustra are saculations of bowel that result from contraction of tinea coli muscle groups. C. Haustra are exclusive to the large intestine. D. All of the above. E. B and C only. The answer is E, B, and C only. The inferior mesenteric artery primarily supplies the what? A. Ascending colon. B. Sigmoid colon. C. Cecum. D. All of the above. The answer is B. Sigmoid colon. Which of the following statements correctly characterizes gastric histophysiology? A. Gastric chief cells release pepsinogen that is subsequently converted into pepsin. B. Gastrin stimulates the release of hydrochloric acid from parietal cells. C. Gastrin promotes gastric motility. D. All of the above. E. None of the above. The answer is D. All of the above. Which of the following choices correctly identifies the structure denoted by the arrow in this ultrasound image of the bowel? A. Tinea coli. B. Haustra. C. Bowel wall. D. Valvular connivance. The answer is D. Valvular conniventus. The colon is divided into segments called A. Villi. B. 
Valvuli Connivance. C. Haustra. D. Ruggy. The answer is C. Haustra. Which of the following statements correctly characterizes the mesentery? A. The mesentery is formed by a double layer of peritoneum that encases and segregates intestinal loops. B. The mesentery contains the vascular supply serving the intestines. C. The mesentery affixes the intestines to the posterior abdominal wall. D. All of the above. E. A and B only. The answer is D. All of the above. Which of the following statements correctly characterizes the small intestine? A. It begins just distal to the pylorus. B. In sequential order, proximal to distal, it is named the duodenum, ilium, and jejunum. C. It typically measures less than 3 cm in diameter, outer wall to outer wall. D. All of the above. E. A and C only. The answer is E, A and C only. Um, cannot be B because the sequential order should be duodenum, jejunum, and then ileum. Which of the following statements regarding transducer selection for sonography of the gastrointestinal tract is correct? A. There is no role for a linear high-frequency transducer during intestinal imaging. B. A low-frequency curved abdominal transducer often provides useful information. C. Graded compression should only be applied when scanning with low-frequency transducers. D. All of the above. E. B and C only. The answer is B. A major impediment to performing a thorough sonographic evaluation of the intestines is the presence of excessive bowel gas. A. True. B. False. The answer is A. True. This is why the patient should fast when we scan the abdomen. Which of the following statements correctly characterizes the duodenum? A. The duodenum is historically divided into two discrete anatomic segments. B. The duodenum is entirely located within the peritoneal cavity. C. The duodenum is suspended by the ligament of triets along its terminal segment. D. All of the above. E. A and C only. The answer is C. True or false? The duodenum is the segment of the small intestine responsible for a majority of nutrient absorption. That is false. Which of the following statements correctly characterizes the large intestine? A. The splenic flexure is the junction between the transverse and sigmoid colon. B. The ileocecal junction is the site at which the small and large intestine meet. C. The hepatic flexure is the location at which the appendix is located. D. All of the above. E. None of the above. The answer is B. The ileocecal junction is the site at which the small and large intestine meet. The jejunum and ileum receive a majority of their arterial blood supply from which artery? A. Celiac artery. B. Superior mesenteric artery. C. Inferior mesenteric artery. D. External iliac artery. E. None of the above. The answer is B. The superior mesenteric artery. The stomach is, A. Is normally located anterior and medial to the spleen. B. Is normally located anterior to the body of the pancreas. C. Is in close communication with the superior pole of the left kidney the left lobe of the liver, and the anterior abdominal wall. D. All of the above. The answer is D. All of the above. Which of the following comprises one of the histological layers of the esophagus? A. Sarissa. B. Submucosa. C. Muscularis externa. D. All of the above. E. B and C only. The answer is E. B and C only. Remember that the esophagus doesn't have the serosa layer. Identify the structures in this image. Number one is the cecum, and number two is the dilated appendix. What is this image depicting? This image shows a long axis view of the appendix. Inflammation of the stomach is termed as? 
A. Gingivitis. B. Gastritis. C. Appendicitis. D. Pharyngitis. The answer is B. Gastritis. What situated midpoint between the umbilicus and the right iliac crest? That is McBurney's point. It will be on the bow exam. What hormone is released by the presence of fat in the intestine, regulates gallbladder contraction and gastric emptying? A. Serotonin. B. Pepsin. C. Calcitonin. D. Gastrin. E. Cholecystokinin. The answer is E. Cholecystokinin CCK. What is the blind pouch of the colon located in the right lower quadrant posterior to the abdominal wall? A. Duodenum. B. Cecum. C. Sigmoid. D. Jejunum. The answer is B. Cecum. Distension of the appendix or the colon with mucus is A. Appendicitis. B. Mucosal. D. Diverticulitis. E. Crohn's disease. The answer is B. Mucosal. Rhythmic serial contractions of the smooth muscle of the intestine that forces food through the digestive tract are called what? Peristalsis. What part of the colon forms the hepatic flexure? A. Ascending colon. B. Descending colon. C. Transverse colon. D. Sigmoid. The answer is A. Ascending colon. What part of the colon forms the splenic flexure? A. Ascending colon. B. Descending colon. C. Transverse colon. D. Sigmoid. The answer is C. Transverse colon. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.